It is a very good day to you. Thank you very much for joining us right here on ZTN News Blitz. Now, a quick look at our top stories. Zimbabwe presses on with elephant culling. Teenage girl kidnaps brother. Toki vibes XQ bury hatchet. And a sport warrior is set to announce a squad. Now for the news in greater detail. The management of Zimbabwe's elephant population, estimated to be well over 80,000, has been a topical matter globally in recent years. The Southern African country says it, has carrying, it is carrying a capacity of around 50,000 jumbos and is planning to sell elephant hunting rights as part of efforts to depopulate its national parks. Animal rights groups have slammed the country for its decision to call its elephant herd. Now, amidst the fierce contestations, Environment and Tourism Minister of Industry Ngobizi Tamangaliso says the depopulation plans will go ahead as planned. Because a lot of noise, useless noise for that matter, is coming from people who have no genuine interest in the conservation uh, that is taking place in Zimbabwe. We are trying to see ways in which we can reduce the numbers. We have to discuss it at policy level as government. Options are on the table, including curling, and I want them to quote this. Options are on the table, including curling. We haven't made a decision on that. Our Zimbabwe Professional Guys Association chairperson Rob Lurie shares his views on elephant population management in Zimbabwe. But the fact is, it's not easy to give someone an elephant. It's a big animal, it eats a lot, it wanders a lot, it doesn't stay in one place. So the next best tool is the management of that by harvesting it. Culling is, is the word used. We know that it was done successfully in the past. We know that it was done in South Africa. Uh, uh, public um, emotions is a big issue with that and uh, we, we've got to gauge that properly but we need to do things by science not by emotion. Project manager for the Global Environment Facility which is backed by the United Nations Development Program Dr. Chipangura Chirara believes clear policies will help solve some of the clashes among stakeholders in the wildlife management sector. Yeah, I think we should have clear legislation and, and of course, and, and, and clear policies. As, uh, as, as the policies being um, developed, there's consultation of these communities, consultation of stakeholders, and I think we should come up with, um, with, with a clear position that incorporates the views of the communities who are living with wildlife. I think that's the important thing so that we incorporate everyone's views, um, the, the, the parks. Um, view, the, the, the government view and, and also the communities and of course I mean we have to appreciate that um, in terms of human wildlife conflict, yes there, there, there is um, a lot of uh, negativity around that and that animals people are being killed and also there is a territory killing of wildlife so we have to find um, a common position in terms of what, what is the policy, what is the government policy, which should incorporate what the communities uh, of use are. Now, police in Zimbabwe, Smashonal and East Province are worried over an increase in violent crimes in the province. Data from police shows that the province has recorded 61 cases of rape since the start of the year, 10 more than the same, 10 more than the same period last year. Officer in charge of operations in Mashonal and East Province, Assistant Commissioner Eamon Doe, said a majority of perpetrators of rape and sexual violence were relatives of the victims. Mashonaland East Province has also recorded 503 cases of theft and unlawful entry so far this year, 28 cases more than the same period in 2020. <laughs> Most 
Tukuona tayari utiwa na wali makuri alipaka tete three years, tuka forty years, ndo wani kwa shibata shiba. Ba kuita chere chere zidu, tasa kuona utiwa no para moswa wa, dawa na ani, zaki kuona zaki nyani sa, baru para moswa ni wakamu. A teenage girl from Musana in Mashonaland Central Province allegedly abducted her three-year-old brother and went into hiding 135 kilometers away from home for six days. The parents filed a missing persons report with the police, leading to the girl and her half-brother being found in Epworth, a settlement on the outskirts of Harare. But while some are accusing her of mischief, the girl, whom we cannot name because of her age, insists she did all this to save her brother from further abuse. Police say they will not press charges but will instead provide counseling services to allow her to reintegrate into the family. Mashonlin Central Provincial Police Spokesperson Inspector Milton Mundembe spoke to Setian's Lloyd Ndemo. <laughs> Wari tu, so they were are are pretty missing what you tu. I got the endagu kumba kuisha Maria ki kuepo it. Bambas na ina dama sinista a motive a behind, so there is no charge in it for later. Asuwa na wa, the wajango it kwa inun the cancelling and the reintegrated to work at the Ghana Bauchet. Baba Baba Bauchet is your next call. Ghana he attacked her. Gaza ma approached me well and behaved. Two men, Atul Kenneth Seremani and Donation Machaya, appeared before Harare Magistrate Dennis Mangoti on Wednesday facing extortion charges. Investigators to the court that in 2020, the duo duped Malaita.com 4,000 United States dollars under the pretext that they will facilitate work permits for their staff. Police lured them to collect payment and affected, effected arrests when they received the money. Investigators gave them original and fake notes which made it easy to nab them. Moving on, harvesting is in full swing across the country and this year Zimbabweans, including those in urban areas, seem prepared to substitute bread with sweet potatoes. According to the latest Crop and Livestock Assessment report issued by the Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Rural Settlement, sweet potato production increased by 269% in the 2020-2021 farming season. Farmers produced 422,613 metric tons of the tuber compared to 114,558 metric tons the previous season. Now Zeti and Owen, Owen Kaura spoke to some sweet potato farmers and vendors in Harare. Perry Eben farming at its best. I'm just 1.5 kilometers uh, outside Harare's uh, CVD. As, uh, you can see just uh, behind me here, you've got the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, the iconic Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. Uh, this is the hillside area. And with me here, I've got um, Tawanda Munana. And he's a farmer uh, who is specializing in sweet potatoes. And I can see that his crop is doing so well. He's got over 45 beds of the crop which will give him approximately 2,700 US dollars if he sells on the market. And so here, yeah, Tawanda, can I just help you with um, uh, the digging here? I'm just gonna have a go and see what we come up with here. There we go, Tawanda. And look at this. This is now a staple in Zimbabwe. Most families well, they're saying they can't afford bread anymore, and this is a good uh, substitute. So Tawanda is just going to tell us his story, how he started, and what uh, the sweet potato is doing for him and his family. Pambaira is in 45 beds. I see Pakare by 45 meters. Saka in it, it's about the Mwamba one going to be 12 buckets. And the name Muri, the name Zimai, never not two. Saka do it's about the Pachkafuanochapasirikatiguanaomari. <laughs> I 
Nous avons Just don't overdose the children with sweet potatoes, lest they complain like young Zuli and Karendo did last year. Now moving on, dancehall artist Toki Vibes has confirmed the dispute between him and fellow musician XQ over royalties generated by the pair's hit song Waka Temba on YouTube. However, Toki says the tiff which has seen the song being taken down from the online site is being settled in form is being settled. An informed sources revealed that after creating Waka Temba, Toki Vibes and XQ agreed that they would collaborate on a Toki Vibes song, but XQ reneged on the agreement. In retaliation, Toki has had the song pulled down from YouTube, and Excuse manager Sei Mukondo refused to comment on the matter. They said that he, we can't disclose anything until we finalize the contract. So that Jelen and Toki, since that by come in there, Sorry to be rude, but that's the legal uh, rules that we are taking. ZTN correspondent Bonisin Lea got a comment from Toki Vibes. Ah, <laughs> In South Africa, 14 crew members of a vessel from India have tested positive for COVID-19 at the Durban Harbour. The vessel is under lockdown and crew members are in quarantine. The vessel sailed from India 17 days ago. The global spotlight on the coronavirus pandemic is currently turned on India. It has more than 20 million cases and counting. A Malian woman has given birth to nine babies in what is an extremely rare case. Halima Sis, aged 25, gave birth on Tuesday to five girls and four boys in a Moroccan hospital where she had been admitted. The deliveries were done through cesarean section. A Mrs. had been expected to give birth to seven babies based on the ultrasound scans done in Mali and Morocco that apparently did not expect did not dictate the two extra babies. Doctors say the newborns and the mother are doing well. On January the 6th, as an angry mob stormed the U.S. Capitol, then President Donald Trump posted on Facebook that his supporters should remember this day forever. Now, in response, Facebook did something it had resisted for years, banned Trump's account indefinitely for inciting violence. The Facebook-Trump relationship will hit a new inflection point later today when a Facebook-funded panel of experts will announce whether the social media giant must reinstate Trump's account. We move on to the world of sport. We start off with football. The Warriors technical team faces a dilemma over Kama Billiard and Terence Dukumanja selection for the 2022 World Cup qualifier squad. The two South Africa-based players are still recovering from injury at a time Zimbabwe are set to face South Africa on the 5th of June at the National Sports Stadium. The full squad is expected to be released today. On to some volleyball. The Zimbabwe Volleyball Association is set to host a series of beach volleyball tournaments this year. Uh, in an interview with ZTN, Harare Volleyball Association Vice President Mercy Chachukoka said the plan is to continue spreading the sport across the country. As Zimbabwe Volleyball Association, we've actually got on our calendar now uh, a series of uh, beach volleyball tournaments that are going to be running in all provinces. Um, we want to do them concurrently because of the COVID situation, um, but most likely our major start of the tournament is going to be in our major cities. So uh, in major provinces, I think we're going to first launch in um, Harare and then Blueyo and then Manikaland. And I know we wanted to do Matabelen and North or Matabelen and South. And we, in particular, we want to use um, Mlibizi Beach because we're thinking beach volleyball has that component where it can also promote uh, national tourism. Now, don't forget to connect with us on our social media platforms, our Twitter at ZTN News, our Facebook, Zim Papers TV Network, Instagram at ZTN. And don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube channel, ZTN. Thank you for watching.